Okay. All right. Okay, ready? Right, so the video's going to start. One, two, three. Hi, how's it going? That was where you come in. Mm. Hi, how's it going? Hi, my name's Finn. Do they, I, do they remember? I, I think they know what your name is by now, yeah. They might have forgotten, or someone might have subscribed in the last, like, three years, and they wouldn't know who you are, because you haven't been here. Months. How's life? Yeah. Then? It's been good. Uh, I went away for a bit to find myself, and Sorry. now I'm back, and I've found myself. Oh, that's fantastic. And I'm excited to be here, because I'm excited about what we're introducing today. It's and You it's just good. love life. It's good. <laughs> good. Well, I'm glad you're back. Thanks for coming back. Um, today... <laughs> What's the problem? What is on your face? <laughs> what do you mean, what's on my face? I go away for like three months. You've just grown like hair here. You've got Harry Potter glasses. Your hair's fallen back over your head. You've lost it. Little do these guys know that your trousers are pink. <laughs> Enough madness. What are we doing today? Today we are sharing something that we have been out filming for a while. It's the third episode of Following Heart, which is a series that we've been rolling out on this channel. So the third or the second? It's a third video, second episode of Following Her. Because there was an introduction video. Yep. I got it. And uh, yeah, this one is featuring Gillian Morris, yep. who is a shark conservationist. And it's set in the Bahamas. So we got to go to the Bahamas to film it. That was a tough time. It, well, it was. I mean, it was It was business, you know. We had, to, we had yep. to go there and we had to do what we had to do. There was no sunbathing. No swimming. No sharks involved. Nothing -uh. like that. No. -uh. Um, it was very serious. But we are excited to introduce it. Anything else before they watch it? Um, uh, after you've watched said video, which is about to roll onto the screen in front of you, if you want to see some of the behind the scenes photos and a blog post about our time there and what we did and yes. how we made it, uh, we uploaded that to our website and so you can go see that on jackscap.com. That's my plug. Are you plugging your own website? I'm plugging my website. That is shameless. <laughs> so without further ado, we are super excited and proud to introduce to you Following Heart episode two. This is the third video of the Following Heart series. Yeah, Following Heart, The Shark Conservationist. Um, a film we made about Gillian Morris. Yeah, well, Following Heart featuring Gillian Morris. Here's something we shot, edited, and we're uploading it to the channel. Enjoy. On average, five people die from shark attacks every year in the entire world, and people kill 100 million sharks, all right? So f I always ask kids this, five people, 100 million sharks. Should we be afraid of sharks or should they be afraid of us? I'm Jillian Morris, I'm a shark conservationist and I live in Bimini, the Bahamas. Bimini is extremely small. Uh, the South Island, where I live, is about six or seven miles long. There is an airport, there's one small store, one resort. Uh, the North Island, which we have to take a water taxi to get to, is where we do most of our grocery shopping. That's where there's a bank and uh, a medical clinic. It's very remote, even though it is close to the United States. I absolutely love sharks. I've loved them my whole life. I probably saw my first shark when I was snorkeling when I was about eight. I was fascinated by it. Um, I was fascinated by all ocean creatures. All right, so even our dog loves sharks, um, or we like to think she does. So these are just some of her various shark toys. Ice cube trays, the bottle opener, cookie cutters, knife, and the ever important pizza wheel. This is one of the pizza. From Australia. This is another custom one. The hallway with a couple of signs. That was a custom done. Grandma made these. There are shark sheets, um, and then my grandmother made us a whole shark quilt, actually. Sharks are predators, they are wild animals, and just like any wild animal, you need to be respectful of it. And they're not man eating monsters, they do not actively hunt humans. Um, but they do need to be respected like any other animal. So I don't swim up and hug them or try and cuddle with them. I do love them, but I do respect that they are a wild animal. And when I go into the ocean, I'm in their world. I'm in their house and I have to be mindful of that.
I really find my time in the ocean with sharks, it's quiet, it's peaceful. It's probably not a word people would use to describe swimming with sharks, but for me, that's really what it is. It's really that connection and being in their world and on their terms. In my experience, taking people out and showing them sharks has proven to be very, very powerful in changing their opinion, their ideas about these animals. So if you can get to kids when they're young and give them facts versus misconceptions, we can make a change, and that's why I started Sharks for Kids. Through Sharks for Kids, we visit schools and do in-person talks. We offer materials online and we help teachers um, in turn bring that curriculum into their classroom. But, believe it or not, chances are there are things you're already actually doing to help these animals and to help our oceans. I guarantee there are things you're already doing. We'll talk a little bit more about that. So, I live on a really tiny island, so my access to uh, people is limited. Uh, the population is pretty small, so in order to reach more people and spread shark education and shark awareness, Skype has been an invaluable tool to reach a lot of people all over the world from my tiny little island. And I wouldn't otherwise be able to do that. I wouldn't be able to talk to a school in England, Australia, China, India, all in the same day and reach all these kids if it weren't for programs like Skype. Yeah, or an air tank, right? Because I can only hold my breath for so long and I certainly can't breathe underwater, so I have to take my own air with me. So if you think about the backpack you brought to school today, my backpack... Change doesn't happen immediately, it takes time, and one person at a time, we can change the way the world sees and thinks about sharks. Do you think you're making a difference? I definitely think I'm making a difference um, in some small way. Each day I speak to a lot of kids, and if one of those kids, if I talk to 100 students in a day, and one of them decides to not buy a shark product, decides to be a shark, biologist when they grow up, goes home and tells their parents, guess what, a hundred million sharks are being killed. If one kid does that, then I think I've made a difference. So that's, you know, that's what I can hope, is that each day I'm able to connect with one person and it changes their mind and maybe they're not afraid of sharks or now they want to see them um, and they're excited about them or they want to learn more. Um, I think that that's really powerful because change happens one person at a time. My adult life has evolved heavily around sharks working with them, filming them, tagging them, doing science and educating people about them and I hope that I continue to be able to do this for as long as I can. <laughs>